Hello everyone, this is Susanna, God Crochet and Chatter. Welcome back. Today is Ron and I. It is our 10th anniversary today. Ron made me this beautiful handmade card. He took a piece of paper, folded it in half, and he drew all kind of beautiful things and beautiful sentiments on it. It truly touched my heart. I got him a really nice card, and I got him, and well, I guess the both of us, um, Star Trek Voyager series. Um, we are Trekkies, and uh, we really enjoy watching those. I had borrowed my daughters, and a couple of the discs didn't work. Uh, a couple of them got broken, just getting them out of the thing. So I thought, well, it'd be nice to order us a set. And when my daughter starts watching her set again, I'll have her note which ones were broken out of what series, and I will replace those for her, of course. All right. Today, we're going to do a trivia question. And then we are in our book, Man, Myth, Messiah. Today is Thirsty Thursdays. I picked this theme, Man, Myth, or Messiah. I thought it'd be great to learn a little bit more how we can know he was the Messiah. Isn't that a great study? Come on, let's hear it. Great study. <laughs> all right. First of all, we're going to start out with a trivia question. <clears throat> what did David and Sibiskea have in common? You can find the answer in 2 Samuel 21.18. And 1 Samuel 17, 4 through 49. What did David and Sibic K have in common? Well, some of those names really get you, don't they? I have always admire ministers that can get up and just whip off these things just like that. And I'm going, what? <laughs> Vocabulary wasn't my strong point in school. I like to talk a lot, but my spelling and vocabulary sometimes quite top-notch, but I tried. All right, <clears throat> let's get to our lesson for today. Today, we are going to read Liar, Lunatic, or Lord? What say you? What do you say? Was he a liar, a lunatic, or was he the Lord? In an earlier generation, the former atheist and legendary author and philosopher C.S. Lewis posed his famous trilemma. He said, based on the claims of Jesus in the Gospels about being the Son of God, that he was either a lunatic because he thought he was God, a liar because he knew this wasn't true, or he was indeed Lord. This challenge by Lewis was to help people not get stuck with the position that Jesus was merely a good man and not the Messiah that he claimed and demonstrated himself to be. Therefore, he was a liar or a lunatic and would be disqualified for being the person we should consider as the ultimate representation of the invisible God. Bart Ehrman, a former evangelical believer turned agnostic who teaches at the University of North Carolina tells of how he added the word legend to the list of options that Lewis proposed when considering the true unity of Jesus. He asked, what if Jesus didn't claim to be the Son of God? That would mean that the stories about Christ's miracles and his resurrection from the dead were simply legends constru constru constructed constructed by his followers long after his death. This notion is echoed by popular writers who dismiss the claim of Jesus being the Christ and regulate him to being a Jewish zealot who died trying to lead an insurrection against the Romans. Writers such as Raza Ashlin, the sociologist mentioned in the introduction, who turned from the Christian faith back to his original faith in Islam, claimed Jesus was an illiterate peasant who never said most of what the Gospels say he said or did the things they say he did. Very little of what Aslan says is original thought, however. 
He simply restates the writings of skeptics before him, such as John Dominic Crossland and Margaret Borg. Ashland ignores the Gospels and opts instead for writings, not about Jesus, but about the type of people from his times and from those who might have lived in his town. He asserts, for better or worse, the only access one can have to the real Jesus comes not from stories that we are told about him after his death, but rather from the smattering of facts we can gather from his life as part of a large Jewish family of woodworkers, builders struggling to survive in the small Galilean village of Nazareth. That's like saying we can get a better picture of Abraham Lincoln from studying what people were like in the region of the United States that were his contemporaries rather than studying the accounts of his life from those who knew him best. It is deeply irresponsible to dismiss the testimony as biased from people who believed in Jesus and accept the perceptions of those who didn't believe in him as more credible. Excuse me. The growing body of literature makes these types of claims, and the rise of internet skeptics that proclaim this type of writing as scholarly and authoritative have evoked a renewed effort to set the record straight. That's why the title of this work, Man, Myth, or Messiah, offers a different trilemma for a different generation. Man, Myth, or Messiah. Liar, lunatic, or Lord. Wow. If he was a liar, then every statement that's in the Bible that he says, things that he claims to have done, he lied about it. It was trickery. Lunatic. He was completely out of his mind. He was some kind of zealot. He was really over the top. Or... Was he who he claimed to be? The Lord. The Lord who did all the beautiful things he did while he was on earth. He came to save us from our sin. He came to seek and save those that were lost. He fed people. He healed people. He clothed people. He never turned anybody away. And he proclaimed himself as the Son of God. Either he said those things, they were true, or they won't. They weren't. Well, with all the evidences that we have, we can be assured that he is the Messiah, the one and only. All right. I hope you've enjoyed that lesson today on man, myth, or legend. Next time we come on next week, we will be talking about the quest for the historical Jesus. I just had my bookmark. Okay, I'll put my pencil there for now. All right, well, I have laundry going right now. I'm going to be finishing that up soon. Uh, we're going to have my homemade spaghetti tonight. Uh, we probably will be going out to eat for our anniversary, maybe this weekend. The weather here has been rainy and wet for the last two, three days. It's cold. Uh, my... Infection is not clearing up yet, so we're just staying at home, enjoying the company of each other and the warmth of our home. We're going to get ready to put the bubble wrap on our windows soon because our windows are not very good in the apartment here, and we have a lot of air leakage, and that can add a lot to your heat bill. So we're going to do everything we can to kind of curb that a little bit. So what have you guys been up to? Is this your favorite time of year? What is your favorite time of year? I would like for you to share um, some more about yourselves. Uh, a lot of you responded um, various places that you are from. California, Tennessee, Florida. That was great, great to hear that. It's amazing that I'm sitting here in Michigan and somebody in Uganda is listening to our channel, our theory. He's a great man. He loves the Lord. He is. Uh, he takes helps take care of the orphans in his area, and they're very near and dear to his heart. So let's keep praying for his ministry to do very well, and that Lord the Lord blesses his efforts. Dorothy, 
I saw that you mentioned the little baby that was, um, from what I understand, the baby was taken outside the womb and he only weighs a little bit, like under two pounds. And they're trying to take care of the baby. Something happened where they had to stop the pregnancy, I think. And I think it's related to her. I think it's her, his, her great, great grandson. Um, Alexa, stop timer. Sorry about that. That's my laundry and it's done. Dorothy, we'll be praying for that situation that this little baby that the Lord puts his healing touch upon him and that he grows into a healthy young man that believes in the Lord. I know with uh, you there, Dorothy, he's going to get some great teaching. All right, everyone, you take care. Crochet Becca, thank you for your comments. Uh, there were a couple of new ones that commented. I don't quite remember your names yet, but I'll get there. Thank you, everyone, for supporting my channel. I sure do appreciate it. All right, I have to go for now because I've got things to do. All right, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.